the time is limited. So any non-Muslim would like to ask a question, they would be given the first chance. Any non-Muslim, yes brother, most welcome. My name is Shyam, Shyam Sunar. I work in Marathi Mahanagar paper. I am a teacher. I don't have a word from you. What do you say? But I think that... Your name is Shyam Sunar. कि भारत में हिंदू और मुस्लिम एक होने के लिए कुछ ना कुछ होना चाहिए ऐसा मुझे लगता है मैं करता आया हूं दस बारह साल से लेकिन आपके मुंह से मैं ये सुनना चाहता हूं कि भारत में बस्ती में मैं तो चालीस गांव इस गांव में रहता था मुंबई में रेजुलेटी के लिए आया हूं बस्ती बस्ती में जो हिंदू और मुस्लिम है इनके दिल में अगर गलत फहमी है और वो है भी सही मायने में कुछ हद तक है तो वो दूर करने के लिए आपकी क्या सुझाव है कि हिंदू और मुस्लिम दोनों कम्युनिटी के लोग कैसे इकट्ठे आ सकते हैं ब्रदर गुड क्वेश्चन दैट व्हाट इज द सजेशन फ्रॉम मी दैट हाउ कैन वी गेट द हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम ऑन अ कॉमन प्लेटफॉर्म हाउ कैन वी कम टूगेदर द रिप्लाई टू दिस इज आई हैव गिवन अ टॉक ऑन सिमिलैरिटीज बिटवीन हिंदुइज्म एंड इस्लाम आई हैव गिवन द टॉक इन बॉम्बे आई गिवन द टॉक इन चेन्नई I have given other parts of India, and we find there that tens of thousands have attended in Bombay, about twenty thousand in Chennai, a similar number, and other parts of India. And many non-Muslims have attended, many Hindus have attended, thousands of them, and many of them told me that Brother Zakir, there was a person just a comment that what I did not know about Hinduism in the past forty years of my life, I have learned in the past four hours. I follow the guidance of the Quran of Surah Al Imran, chapter three, verse sixty-four, which says, "Taala wila kalmitin sawa imbrana bainakum." Come to common terms as me, us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na uda illa Allah. That we worship none but one God. What we realize that I don't believe in interfaith dialogue. We say that Hinduism is the same, Islam is the same, Christianity is the same. This is just a gimmick. If I ask the Hindu pundit, will you become a Muslim? He'll say no. If I ask the Muslim, will you become a Christian? He'll say no. If I ask the priest, will you become a Hindu? He'll say no. So what is same? It's not same. We have to agree that there are differences, but there are similarities also. Let us agree at least to follow the commonalities. What is different? Keep it aside. So what I say that take all the religious scriptures, whether it be the Bhagavad Gita, whether it be the Veda, the Upanishad, the Bible, the Quran. At least what is common, what is different? Keep it aside. We can discuss some other time. But at least what is common, let us agree to follow it. And I've given the talk and I've showed so many similarities. So many, so you can refer to my video cassette. And what happens? Many of them are not aware. The Muslims are not aware of their religion. Similarly, the Hindus are not aware of their religion. Many of the Muslims objected. Similarities between Islam and Hinduism is impossible. So many of the people came with the talk to attack. The Rabi am bullying. What nonsense! Hindu and Muslim same. Who can attack that? But when they heard the talk, they were shocked. Those who came to attack, they agreed with the talk. Similarly, many Hindus came. So what we realize that what is common we should follow, and number one is Allah na wa taala that we worship none but one God. That is the most common thing, and which you can give quotations, and we can give quotation from the Vedas, from the Bhagavad Gita. It is mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number six, section number two, verse number one. Ekam evidityam, God is only one without a second. It's mentioned in the Shweta Shatar Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine. Na chasse kasi janita na chadipa. Of him there are no lord. He has got no parents. These are Sanskrit quotations. That means Almighty God has got no parents. He has got no lord. Furthermore, if we analyze, it is mentioned in the Shweta Shatar Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number nineteen. Na chasse pati masti. Of that God there are no images. There is no pratima. There is no photograph. There is no idol. There is no image. Same thing in the Ayurved, chapter number thirty-two, verse number three. Na tasse pati masti. Of that God, there are no images. So if you go back to your Vedas and your religious scriptures, it speaks about one God. So people many a time are not aware of the scriptures. And when the question just a couple of days back, I had given an interview to Star News. They asked me, Brother Zakir, what is your view regarding Mande Mataram? Can the Muslims say or not? I said, "What do the Muslims say? I'll come to it afterwards. I'll first tell you what the Hindu scriptures say." <laughs> He was shocked. What do I mean by that? I said, "If anyone is a scholar of the Veda, the Veda agrees that God has got no pratima. So when you say Vande Mataram, that this country is my mother, and you call it God, a person who is a scholar, I am not talking about the normal people who don't know." About the scripture, but you ask a scholar, he will say that Bande Mataram goes against the Vedas. 
Because one day matram in no less than three places it says, I bow down to thee. I worship thee. If you see about the Arya Samaj and you see the various top scholars, they think according to the Vedas, idol worship is not permitted. There are verses in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20, which says that you should not do idol worship. So here when you go back to your scriptures, unfortunately, they believe in a form of pantheism. So even according to the Vedas, if you are a good scholar, this song, Vande Mataram, that I bow down and I worship thee, as I quoted in Sanskrit, about Upanishad, it's against. Even in Islam, there are 12 lines which are objectionable. Three times it is said, Vande Mataram, which means I bow down to thee. If once it says that this country is my mother, once it says I will kiss the feet, once it says about the divine things, about the smile, talking about divinity, it calls it Lakshmi, it is called Durga, all these things are objectionable. We Muslims, we love this country, but we will not bow down to anyone but to Almighty God. Even a mother, even a mother who has born in a womb for nine months, we love her, we respect her, but we will not bow down to a mother. To our own mother. The number one human being who we love and respect in the world after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will even not bow down to a prophet, prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is it required that we should sing this song, Mande Mataram? It is a political gimmick. Politicians, they thought they get the vote bank, they even made a gimmick on the date. You know when it was written by Bankin Chand in 1876, it was published in 1882, so where is century come now? And where is 7th September? They made a mistake, the politician, political gimmick. <laughs> Furthermore, even a Muslim living in Saudi Arabia, he cannot bow down to his country, Saudi Arabia. Even a Muslim living in Pakistan cannot bow down to Pakistan, it is shirk. So to say that the Indian Muslims are not patriotic, it is our religion. Our creator, our God who has made this country is far superior. So we love this country, when required for the truth, we are willing to die for this country. But we will not bow down to anyone but Almighty God. We would prefer questions from non-Muslims first because we have a limited time. I think it would be fair to the occasion. And people who would like to ask questions on slip can kindly write on the slips and pass it on down the aisle. Yes. Any other question with any sister there? A non-Muslim sister? Yes. Assalamu alaikum and good evening to everyone present here. My name is Preeti Sethi. I would like to ask you, sir, as in your talk you have said that Osama Biladin, we can't consider him as a terrorist, as it is said in BBC and CNN channels. But at the same time, we get the same information about the bomb blast and the count which we get about the bomb blast on the same channel. So whether it has to be believed or no. Thank you, sir. The sisters asked a very good question, very relevant question. I said that when we talk about Osama bin Laden, that if you get information on BBC that he's a terrorist, we don't have to believe. But when we get the count of the bomb blast, do we have to believe? That's what I said, the people controlling. That doesn't mean all the news of BBC is wrong. That news in which they make a hero into a villain, in which they benefit, you have to check up. So here when we see that these normally bomb blast figures that you get, most of them, that you find will be somewhat similar. If it's a government channel of the country in which the bomb blasts are taking place, the figure will be normally no. Why? Because the government wants to show that less people have been killed. Like the police commissioner wrote to me, 187 people killed. Newspaper writes 207. I don't know who's right. I'm not saying that Commissioner A.N. is lying. I'm not saying that. Please don't get me wrong. So here we have to realize that when we get information, we have to see the proof. When we see the proof, about Osama bin Laden, even on the channel, it is mentioned prime suspect sister. Prime suspect. Prime suspect. Do you know, if you go to the website of the US Department of Justice, Info Police, they give the list of the terrorist organizations. Terrorist organizations. 43, 60% are Muslim. Can you guess which is the most popular terrorist organization? Can you guess Muslim terrorist organization? Can you guess? No, sorry. Which is the most popular... Muslim terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda. You don't get a prize for that, very easy. <laughs> Al-Qaeda. According to the US Department, you know how many attacks? How many attacks? Ulfa, 749 attacks. Al-Qaeda, only 28. Out of that, 26 alleged. Two Al-Qaeda claims they did it. According to the site of US Department of Justice, Al-Qaeda claims, all alleged, not a single proved. 
even on the official side of your department of justice not a single attack of al qaeda has been proved i am not here to support al qaeda you know when you on deadly went to afghanistan she was arrested by the taliban she comes back and she asks the question what are your views about al qaeda she replies i doubt whether al qaeda exists <laughs> So sister what I'm trying to tell you that when we get the information if you are a man of the media or a person of the media you can realize and you know that this information mostly will be correct this has to be checked up so what we have to realize that it is suspect prime suspect prime suspect even on CNN and BBC even though they say it's a prime suspect that eating him as though is a culprit can you go and kill thousands of afghans only because of prime suspect not even prove So, but natural sister, when we hear the news, we have to realize that who controls the news, what is the agenda behind, and then we have to be careful what news you take and what you quote. Hope that answers.